is Okatibi Lake. It is, as far as I'm aware, the largest lake and dam anywhere in my nearby vicinity. It extends all the way from where I am standing to the white structure you can see way off in the distance. It's quite a large structure, this dam. And it was created by filling a gap between two ridges. The elevation behind me increases, and though it may appear slight, the elevation on the other side of the lake increases as well. By filling the gap between these ridges, a valley dam has been created, and consequently a very large lake behind it. Valley dams are one of the several types of dams and water harvesting techniques that we learned about this week in our online permaculture design certificate course. This is Lake Tom Bailey, and you can see the dam that forms the lake right behind me. Now dams are not the only kind of water harvesting that we can do, but they are very visual and they do offer us a wide variety of design opportunities where we can create diversity. We can control certain design elements and do things like provide shallow areas as well as deep areas and provide a diversity for the aquatic life. We can control the edge and shape of the lake that is formed so that we can use those edges for more diversity as well. But there's a lot of other types of water harvesting that we can do in permaculture. So many other methods of harvesting water are perfectly acceptable. Collecting rainwater off of the hard surfaces of your roof and other locations, putting in swales on contour to slow down the flow of water and let it soak into the soil in many other ways as well. The important thing for us to understand as permaculturists is that we're not in this course to learn how to construct a dam ourselves. We're here to understand the necessities behind dam construction. What we need to consider so when a client tells us, I'd like to put a water feature here, that we can understand whether or not it will function in that location or just how many additional resources they're going to have to commit if they are sold on having to put a water feature in a particular location. And knowing what other options might be available to them. So if a suggestion is made that we're not comfortable with, we could say, well, here's what I see in this location and maybe present them another situation that after they hear it, they go, well, I haven't thought of that before. I like that situation better. There's always going to be gives and takes in any kind of situation that we do, but we do have to understand the truths, the things that cannot change, uh, the things that we are learning in dam construction and swale construction so that we can be able to relay to the earth movers what exactly needs to be done so we can communicate our intentions clearly to them to make sure that the final product is what the client is going to be happy with and that is going to be productive and meet our three ethical goals. Yet again, Jeff has brought up to us the concept that we want to try to expand our horizons before working on our own site. And the more I hear him say it and the more context he puts to it, the more I understand this because I do have certain desires with my property. I have certain areas where I think, this will be a perfect location for a dam. I think I can get two swales in on this entire ridge and all those kind of things. But perhaps having those concepts already in my mind, those can be roadblocks. Those can be stumbling blocks to stop me from seeing a better picture, seeing something where I can better connect design elements together. And that by either offering our services as a paid consultation or for free, that we can gain some outside experience 
not so that we don't destroy our property first, but so that we get our minds thinking about what we see in other locations so that when we come back to the land we've already been looking at for so long, we can see it differently. Because we've seen situations at other locations that inspire us and move us to see something differently on our own site. We've personally lived here for five years, and I have all sorts of concepts already gummed up in my brain, and I think that's going to be a great benefit to be able to put these skills and knowledge to use somewhere else so that I can come back and see this property with new eyes. One thing that we cannot forget as we approach our design is that water is one of the three things that we're looking for when we first approach a site along the side of access and existing structures. Water is that important. Life cannot exist without it. So we need to understand all the different ways that we can harvest the water, slow the water down, so that as it enters our system, we can connect it to as many elements as possible, get the most use out of it as we can, before it finally finds its way out the sink at the bottom of our system. Next week we're going to talk about soils and I'm very interested to see what other information we can learn about soil because I've seen it for myself. I have seen soil transform from being something that even the most invasive grass did not want to touch to being able to grow an annual vegetable garden in it. So I can't wait to learn more information and the best practices on how to accomplish those things in a permaculture way. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.